Welcome to Superheroes of Science. I'm Steven. And I'm Sarah. We co-host Science from the Experts. Our guests are professionals doing cutting-edge science right now. They are experts in their field discussing what they know best. So listen up and learn real science from real people. Subscribe now and stay informed of our latest episodes and show your support. Joining us today on Superheroes of Science, we are so excited to welcome Mike Hoffman. Mike, thanks for joining us, and you are you have some history with the Purdue Department of Earth, Atmosphere, I, and Planetary Sciences. I graduated Sciences. from here in 1981, before they had planetary in the name, okay. so yeah. Earth <laughs> and Atmospheric Sciences, um, and I've been a meteorologist most of the time on television ever since. Nice. Now, and that's northern Indiana, right? South Bend, I was there for 27 years. Okay. Uh, WNDU, yes, that stands for Notre Dame University, but... Uh, we were right on the edge of campus, uh -huh. but my wife and I retired back here to West Lafayette. So. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, well, it's, you're used to working in front of a green screen then. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. That, I don't even think about it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it still throws me off. It does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, now the weird part is, the, the hard part to learn is looking at the little TV screen off to the side and where are you pointing. Wait, oh, uh, that would be tricky. It doesn't right? take long, uh -huh. but you can tell somebody who's never done it before because they're searching. Oh, no. Like, trying to figure it out. <laughs> But we're, so, still, we're not sophisticated enough yet to have that. No, but right off the bat, that tells us, that tells, if you go into a studio to watch somebody do the weather, uh -huh. they're in front of a big green screen and you do not see the weather map. You have no idea what they're talking about. But it goes out on TV and we see what we see on TV off to the side so we can tell what we're pointing at. Oh, uh, okay. That's that, yeah, that would be a little tricky. <laughs> but yeah. I can't wear that color. Yes. See, so this is this has caught us a couple of times. We have a, a video with a, a student group. They used a bike pump. They were demonstrating something, and the bike pump was green, just like and the it, background. And it so then in the final, it's, it's all just yes, yeah, it's, it's a magical. It's electronically everything that's that color gets cut out of the picture. Amazing. And if it's close to that color, you basically You're see it disappear. It yeah, yeah, it's gone. It so was on the money. <laughs> it was on a, it was just yeah. weird floating handle that yes. was moving. It was yeah. awesome. You can do some cool th cool stuff with that. Yeah. All right, so let's let's start let's start with the career component right first. Perfect. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I know I'm taking this off the script that we never wrote. Um, but um, yes. what's a person have to do to be a weather person? So it's a lot of math and science. Uh, okay. people don't always realize that. Mm -hmm. uh, here at Purdue the first two years I'm taking the same classes as the engineers and uh, those were not easy. I, I love the weather. <laughs> I came out of high school, a small Indiana high school, uh, with every math and science class that they had, mm -hmm. but it was still tough. You, you're talking some really smart people in engineering, College mm -hmm. of Engineering here That's at Purdue. Yeah. So uh, I made it through those classes and got to my weather classes and then it was okay. Up to the fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. I, I wouldn't guess a lot of, um, initially, a lot of math. And so that's interesting to. And I worked in television, and so I didn't have to do all the computer programming. I didn't have to worry about how the model was working. Okay. I uh -huh. just took what the model was telling us and went on TV and uh, talked about it. So. Okay. Uh, um, obviously, over my course of my career, I could not teach <laughs> one of the high-level classes here at Purdue now because um, I've kind of lost some of that because on television, you really you, you have to talk in a more general term. I see. Uh, it, well, that and you, you talked about the model, so let's talk about the model. Let's go yeah, into that first. Yeah. So, a, yeah, what what we hear. The, the weather people telling us about, oh, the models say, but uh, who are these I, models well, that's talking to you? <laughs> well, and that, I, I'm always impressed. I didn't realize there were more than one model. And, yeah, and there, there didn't used to be. Okay. But yeah, when I came out of school, I, I, as far as I knew, there was only one model that we looked at. But now mm -hmm. we get the European, we get the Canadian, we get the, oh, the Britain, British mm -hmm. model. So there's all these different models, and they all use the math and science in a little bit different way. They're all okay. trying to model the atmosphere, trying to uh, put this chaos that's the atmosphere into uh, something that tells us what the weather's going to be. Yes. And as we all know, they're always right. <laughs> no, they're, they're never exactly no. right, ever. <laughs> because, and, and you never want to say never in science, but I, I don't see, in, in our lifetimes, uh -huh. The, the weather apps, the people on TV, are not ever going to be perfect. 
yeah. with every forecast. We'll never get to that stage in our lifetimes, but I, I don't want to say never, but it's kind of hard for a computer model to deal with chaos. And so I would say, and you brought up chaos, <coughs> yes. you mentioned yeah. the chaos in there, yeah. and so it, it, it does seem so chaotic. So can you explain what, what do we mean? What is chaos and what chaos? So when I, when I go to uh, elementary schools, I usually try and explain it this way. It's like second graders going out for recess. Okay? Okay. <laughs> they go out the door. You don't know where each one's going to go. Uh, they're all over the place. They're kind of mm -hmm. going crazy. They've been cooped up all day. And that's a small little example of chaos. Now, if I wanted to predict uh, where little Susie is going to go mm -hmm. for for her um, uh, recess, I might watch watch them on Monday, and I see Susie goes over and sits under a tree and reads. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on Tuesday, I'm going to predict that that's what she's going to do. So she goes over there, sits and reads. Um, on Wednesday, I predict the same thing. I'm getting pretty good now because mm -hmm. I got it right again. Yeah. On Thursday, I'm three for three. Okay, <laughs> Susie went over there. On Friday, Susie ate something at lunch that didn't agree with her, and she's not feeling very well. Mm -hmm. So she ends up not going over, sitting under a train reading, but going in to see the nurse. That's chaos. You don't know exactly what's going to happen in that situation. And in the weather, we're talking about an infinite number of air particles all around the world, yes. all going different directions, right. different temperatures, different speeds. And we're supposed to uh, try and forecast that. <laughs> now, there's what's called the uh, the butterfly effect. <clears throat> mm -hmm. This was coined. Um, this is just a, a, an extreme example. Okay. Is a butterfly flapping its wings in China could cause a tornado in Mississippi five, six weeks later. That's an extreme example, but little things that are happening. Um, you never know how that affects the air movement over there in China. That whole system moves from mm -hmm. west to east across in the northern hemisphere, and it comes over here. And because of that extra little oomph from the butterfly wing, who knows what that causes over here? So we're not going to totally rule that out. No, but, uh, not, not completely. Not really? So wow. things that we do could we, could we don't know. Yeah, yeah, we don't know for sure. Um, so when my my mom retired from teaching, she was a first grade teacher. Uh, we the whole family uh, at that time we had little kids with us, my wife and I, and so I have two other brothers. So there were a whole bunch of us in this house in Florida, in the Panhandle of Florida, and uh, needless to say, it was it was chaotic in the house. Okay, <laughs> lots of little kids running around and. I, I was noticing the buildup of clouds outside, like I do. Te I tend to look out the window, <clears throat> and I thought, I'm going to go check that out. So I went out to the beach. I had to go around this one house. We were one house away from the beach. And I looked, and I saw this little point on the bottom of the cloud out there. It's dark on the bottom. And I'd never seen a water spout before, but I thought, huh, I wonder if that's maybe the start of it. So I went back and I told the two uh, older boys on the, uh, the front porch, if I yell at you, bring the whole family out. Because water spouts are safe <laughs> as long as they're not coming your way. It'll okay. Be really cool to see. So I went back around the side of this house and it was halfway down to the water. So I yelled, everybody came out and we watched this water spout okay. for about um, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it just fell apart and uh, went away. Now what caused that water spout there? We, we don't know exactly why. Why did it start spinning there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not two miles down the beach? We don't know why. Maybe a flock of birds went by and as this air is rising, it gave it a little bit of extra oomph and once it started, just like a whirlpool in a bath, well a bathtub yeah, drain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How it gets faster and faster in the middle, it's that uh, momentum. And so who knows what caused that water spout to form right there. But it's perfect for us <laughs> at that moment. Yeah, yeah. And it went away without affecting anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the world being chaotic, and it's, yeah. it is. Yeah. I mean, it's like you can't really predict anything, yeah. uh, let alone people like me. Uh, but so how do you predict the weather then? So these computer models um, take every bit of information we can put into them. Mm -hmm. Now I had a professor here at Purdue who um, he was he was 
giving us an example, I'm sure. He writes on the blackboard. I don't know if they use blackboards anymore. They probably have whiteboards yeah, or whatever. I've actually seen some blackboards some in the middle. Some there are still some. In the yeah. old so, buildings. Yeah. 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 Well, oh, I was, I was in an older it, building, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> so he writes down this huge equation, um, you know, like xy plus, uh, you know, W squared and uh -huh. and all of those different letters mean something. Okay. They're, they're, they're something you can measure in the atmosphere. And he puts an equal sign in the middle there. And I can't tell you what half of that probably meant. Mm -hmm. I was still a freshman or sophomore mm -hmm. at that point. And he said, now here's the problem with this huge equation. This, this is like what one modeler would decide he's going to plug into his computer okay. and mm -hmm. see what the computer says. It would take computers at that time about 24 hours to come up with a forecast for tomorrow. Yeah. Now let's think about that for a second. Yeah. 24 hours is tomorrow. Is yeah, exactly. Right. And, and so you your forecast is worthless because the weather's yeah. already happening at that moment. So you have to simplify that equation. So you start Xing out this, eh, it's not a big deal, so we'll X that part out. But that could be the butterfly flapping its wings in China. Right. I mean, I, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, you X out this, you X out this, X out this, so that we can get the computer model to actually forecast within um, a one to two hour period so that tomorrow's forecast is worthwhile sure. mm -hmm. to give to us. <clears throat> and so even with the biggest computers we have now, they're still having to simplify a little bit. Now, not like they used to. The, the computer models are much better than they used to be, mm -hmm. but they're still a long ways from being perfect. And when you have 10 different computer models in the world, big computer yeah. models, and they all show something slightly different for day three, uh, let's say the weekend's coming up and it's a Wednesday and you're looking at Saturday, and you look at uh, three apps on your phone and they're all saying something a little bit uh -huh. different. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, that's because those are three different computer models in most cases. Um, there may be an app or two out there. I'm not, I'm not up on all the apps that, that kind of do an average of all yeah. the computer okay. models. But, I, but in other words, each app is showing something different and that's because of chaos and because each computer model takes into account a little bit something different. Now here's another problem with the computer models. We're only measuring the weather at certain places. You can't measure the weather at every square foot. Yeah. The models no way could handle that. And so you you take probably 150 places across this country, uh, reports the weather every hour of every day, all the all the information you need. We get uh, information from weather balloons and now from satellites yep. on what the temperatures are, wind speeds are in mm -hmm. different parts of the atmosphere. And all of that, <clears throat> all around the world, goes into uh, this computer model. Uh, because the jet stream, the river of air basically in the upper atmosphere is going all the way around the world. So something, that's why we use China as an example for here. I see. Because it goes, mm -hmm. the air goes across the Pacific. It might be doing this, but it's going across the Pacific and it eventually gets here. And so when you have big waves in the atmosphere mm -hmm. over us, you've got them around the other parts of the world as well. And so there's a lot of weird stuff going on sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it flattens out and the weather's not too bad. But all of that goes into the computer models and they're all trying to forecast what tomorrow's going to be like. Mm -hmm. So on television, uh, when I'm, I do my, I did my own forecasting, again, I'm retired now, but I did my own forecasting for uh, 37 years. And you try to kind of know when the models are sometimes wrong and when they're okay. right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and so you you have more confidence in some cases than you do in others. So it's it's a trial and error. It's a learning experience, trying to uh, decide. Well, you know, the models usually don't usually make it too hot in the situation or mm -hmm. not hot enough. Um, and so you try and tweak your forecast in that that direction. Um, people ask me if I, uh, how I'm getting my weather forecast now. I say, just like everybody else, I yeah, have my yeah. app out on my yeah. phone and I try and figure it out from there. Yeah. Um, I occasionally watch some on television too, but um, it, it's, it's, it's really fun to try to forecast the weather, but it's also very frustrating because nobody likes to be wrong. 
Yeah, that's I mean, true. does anybody like to be wrong? Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> but we know, in uh, as a meteorologist, we are going to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every day, if you do, I did a 10-day forecast at the end of my yeah. career. They had moved it from three day to five day to seven day to 10. And um, every day, so there was something wrong on that forecast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes multiple things wrong, but yeah. you do the best you can. Yeah, well, and it's it, that's, but it's really kind of cool to think about the models and think about yeah. how many variables they do try to right. account for, mm -hmm. and how many they're not because we don't we we can't. Right, because there's too much information. Yeah, even for these mm -hmm. really super computers that they have now. Um, now that will continue to allow the forecast to get a little bit better as mm -hmm. you get a better computer. But who's to say the the math and the science is perfect. Every model, right? Yes. If you look at all the X's and Y's and everything, and the different models, they're all a little bit different. They've taken into account heat slightly differently, perhaps, mm -hmm. in one model than the other, and moisture a little differently. And so, um, even that uh, can be tweaked, and we will we will slowly get better at forecasting. Yeah. But it's still when you come down to a tornado warning. And in my career, it was the Napanee, Indiana tornado that was the biggest thing in my career. Mm -hmm. um, and I was on that night, and I was live for three hours um, doing tornado warnings um, on television. And so um, in that situation, you're just flying by the seat of your pants because you're telling people what is going on now, right. where this tornado is. We're getting reports about a crossing, you know, Highway 19 and, and yeah. that type of thing. And you're just telling people ahead of it to get to the basement. And, yeah. you know, you hope that everybody listens. Nobody died in Napanee, even though it was an EF3 tornado that hit the south and east side of the town um, and destroyed a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, but nobody died in it. Now, some of that was luck. I talked to some of the people afterwards. They, yeah. they were in the right spot somehow in their house. Other people knew the warning was there, and they, they heeded the warnings. Um, I, I do have one funny story, <laughs> and and I, I I don't think she would mind me telling it. There, there was a an older lady that I met uh, after the tornado, and it had destroyed her home. And um, she said, "I heard you say six minutes to Napanee," and I figured, well, if I'm going to be down in my basement for a while, I want my slippers and a cup of coffee. And so she went and got that. And as she gets to the top of the stairs, she hears it outside. Now, the sound of a tornado is things breaking. Okay. Okay. So the roar is hundreds of of trees maybe breaking, oh my other uh, parts of houses. Because you always hear it. Yeah. It sounds like a freight train. Well, yes. I always hear well it. if it was only train. wind, yeah. if it was only going across the prairies of Kansas or yeah. something, yeah. you'd probably just hear kind of a, a strong. But yeah. this is this is a roar. Okay. Uh, at least I've never been in a tornado, yeah. but that's what everybody says. It's a, a roaring sound, and so <clears throat> she heard that outside her house. And as she's going down the the basement, she hears her house starting to come apart. Oh so goodness. what I tell people in that situation is, again, it's chaos. Um, I, we're estimating on television. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's an right. estimate. Yeah. It could be you're on the side of town that gets hit first, which means you have less time than six minutes. Mm -hmm. um, it, it might not hit your house, and that would be great. But uh, but at the same time, uh, it's all an estimate, and uh, don't wait till the last second. And yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now the tornado warnings this past uh, what last week. Yeah. We had two tornado warnings here in Lafayette, yeah. although they were never officially for Lafayette. Okay. It was for the southwest corner so, of yeah. Tippecanoe County, and every siren in the whole county yes. goes off. Yes. Now, I hope at some point the technology catches up and, and it only sets little... off the sirens that right. are where the warning is, but that's okay. What did I do? Probably outside. outside. I went outside. Yeah. I went out yeah. to the front porch <laughs> to watch it. That's exact. so we got now, the, yeah. We tell people not to do that, and I wasn't going to be unsafe. I know what I'm looking yeah. at, and yeah. and once it starts to look bad, you get back inside. Yeah. Even with lightning nearby, you shouldn't be outside mm -hmm. um, like that, and so you have to be a little careful. But no, I, I, I acted like 
everybody else since I'm retired and uh, didn't do what Was I tell people to do. Well, we, I, I live about a half hour west, and I got, oh, so of course, yeah. I get the Purdue alert, but I, I thought, wait a minute. You were more in line yet. for that, because so, it was going due north. Yeah, yeah. and I went out, I'm like, it is completely clear, and it is totally clear. What do you mean, no tornado, a warning? That yeah. means it's there, like it's happening, and I just, I don't know. The first, in all honesty, the first warning wasn't the best warning in the world. Okay. Because as soon as they issued the warning, that storm just fell apart. Just, oh. There's that chaos again. Well, that yeah. makes sense then. Yeah. Second storm, um, because uh, I click, when I, when I look at the warnings, I click on the actual warning. from okay. So the Indianapolis National Weather mm -hmm. Service issued the warning. And in the second one, they said a large tornado is on the ground um, southwest of the southwest corner of Tippecanoe oh, okay. County, mm -hmm. so west of Crawfordsville. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when it's like, Oh, you sit up a little straighter and you go, uh oh, you know, this, yeah. this, is, this is not, a lot of the warnings will say radar indicated, okay. which means yes. they're putting out a warning because there's strong rotation, but yes. there's no confirmation of a tornado. Um, so a lot of warnings anymore are crying wolf, unfortunately. And we're going to have to try to fix that because people stop paying attention if you do too many right. warnings and nothing happens. Right. But the so second one. That surprises me. Uh, because there's so many, it's like we're <laughs> trained spotters. We went through spotter mm -hmm. training, mm -hmm. and, and uh, we even have like our amateur radio, and we have our in the apps, and yeah. we have all of that spotter. stuff. To, and, yeah. But uh, I would think there's enough trained spotters these days that we would be able to have more eyes out there in the field. Yeah, and that, and, and that could be the situation in that one. Maybe there were no eyes mm -hmm. on on that particular storm. And so from the meteorologist's perspective, I'm not saying the, the guys put out a bad warning. I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. that one didn't work out very well. Yes. Okay. Um, but which side would you rather be on? Would you rather issue the warning and have nothing happen as a person or not issue a warning and yeah, have the tornado yeah. kill right. a couple of people? Definitely rather be safe. Yeah. Oof. But what that means is we're going to have a lot of false alarms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in order to do that. But again, that's chaos, and it's amazing watching storms. And um, the radar that I watch also shows me rotation, and so mm -hmm. I can see um, see what the weather service is seeing. At least some of it. They they see a little bit more than I do on my little app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're seeing all the data from the uh, from the radar. They're paying for a little bit, a little more bandwidth. Oh there. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not getting all of that. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, compare apps at home. It's, yeah. it's like, I, think, yeah. I think all four of us have a different one. And so I still think, I'm pretty sure mine's best. Uh, <laughs> the, the one I done. But it's, we work here. I mean, atmospheric scientists. And so we listen to them, what they say they're yeah. using. And so I, if it, whatever Robin or Dan's using, that's what I'm downloading. <laughs> I'm a right. dummy. I'm not, I'm not going blind it. I'm figuring out what they're downloading, and that's what I play. Yeah. That so, makes sense. I'll have to find out afterwards what they what they yeah, 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 I'll show you the I have a favorite yeah. of mine, but it's probably different than theirs, so yeah. we'll yeah, see. I, and the one app, the the spotters, you can see where different spotters are. Mm -hmm. And uh, any time weather cool. comes in, I see where Dan Dawson is. I always do. He is always on it. Yeah. He's yeah. always ready. Yeah. Does this show all the spotters that go out? Yeah. yeah. All yeah, the spotters that wow. allow yeah. it to. Yeah. You have well, to give yeah, it permission to. Right. Right. No, yeah. right. Obviously, the, the untrained ones that are just out there spotting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to see where they are. Yeah. No. Yeah, I know, and we've we've talked to some of those before in our workshops, yeah. or like teacher workshops mm -hmm. and stuff. And we had one teacher came in where he was in a group uh, locally, and uh, they would go spot. And he's like, "Yeah, uh, the only really tornado we saw, we shouldn't have been where we were, because it came up behind us." And I guess we didn't realize. And I'm like, hey, "This is why you don't oh, do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is this, is, this yeah. is why you need training to be able to yes. do something like yeah. that." I was lucky and I was able to go on two tornado chases um, because I'm up in South Bend, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Valparaiso University is in Northwest Indiana, and they have a class in it every year. They go out twice. And so I went out two different years with them, didn't see any tornadoes the first year, didn't see any tornadoes two years later, but the year in between, they saw 10 tornadoes what? on the trip. Oh my lands. So what you do in that, in, on a storm chase, and they go for 10 days, 
is you wake up every morning and it's a learning experience for the students. The professor yeah. leads them in a, mm -hmm. in a map discussion and you decide where do we want to head today. Mm -hmm. Might be two hours down the road, which means you can leisurely get there because it's late afternoon or evening most likely. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's 10 hours away. He says you got 30 minutes, be uh, shower, <laughs> showered in the car and we're heading down the interstate and you try to get to that spot. And so it was one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life, but it was grueling. I was, uh, I was very tired by the end of it um, because you really are going <clears throat> what seems like all the time. And some days you yeah. stand out middle of a field in Oklahoma and uh, blue skies, nothing ever pops up, not one cloud in the sky. And you know, that's again, the chaos. It's a guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, kind of part of the process. But we were in a situation one time where we were in a very precarious spot mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the wind picked up going toward um, the area we were kind of looking at and a tornado is kind of the opposite of that drain in the bathtub mm -hmm. flip mm -hmm. that over mm -hmm. and it's actually spinning going up and so it's pulling air in and so we we like whoa we might be kind of close here and so mm -hmm. we got out of there mm -hmm. they issued a tornado warning for that storm two minutes later and a tornado was on the ground we might have seen it if we had stayed there, mm -hmm. or we might have been in it. Yeah. And so you yeah. don't want. So he's. Yeah. He told me later. He goes, as the professor of fifteen college kids, I'm not coming back with injured students, mm -hmm. and so yeah. um, I'm going to be as safe as possible. It's only cool to be in the storms in Hollywood. Yeah. It, it, Correct. It's, it's only cool in the movies. If yeah. you're not in movies, it's yeah. not it's somewhere not. you want to be. <laughs> People ask me about Twister, bringing that up. <laughs> it's like, okay, some it's a really cool movie. It's a fun it, movie. Exactly. It, it but there is not a chance in the world somebody is going to be in, let alone see, six tornadoes in 20, one 24 hour period. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. First of all, you probably wouldn't survive if, if, yeah. Yeah. if you did. Well, and, and I always lie, I think we've talked to Robin about that uh -huh. before too, and Robin's other add to that I just remember was, and if you are, you will not be hashing out relationship issues in the middle of it. And I really think that's hilarious. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there's no. other things probably more pressing at the time. Yes. So. You wouldn't even know what was going on right. if, if you got picked up by a tornado. Yeah. I mean, there's you wouldn't be able to see. There'd be mud in your face. Oh, and my everything. goodness. Yeah. Water and dirt flying everywhere. So. <laughs> And other stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's the scary thing. It's no, it is. Debris. Uh, yeah. Every every single everything out there all of a sudden becomes projectile. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that's scary. Anything <laughs> flying through the air at 150 miles an hour or, or whatever, how depending on how strong yeah. that tornado is, is going to do damage. So. Uh huh. Definitely. Yeah. You mentioned the size of a tornado. Oh. Yeah. And I know when I watch all my B movies, it, it's mm. it's going to be an F something. But you said E F mm. something. Did you do you want to explain what what why you're using E F instead so, of just an F? So the F was from Dr. Fujita at the University of Chicago. He came up with this scale. Yes. Uh, between zero and five, there could still be a an F zero tornado just. It's more like a water spout or a dust devil, strong oh. dust devil or something. I mean, it, it can cause some minor damage. And then it goes up to five, and five is obviously a very rare event. It happens mm -hmm. maybe once every two years in this country on average. Oh, okay. Um, somewhere. And so he came up with that scale. Well, they decided to enhance it a little bit, mm -hmm. and so it's the EF. Now, he, he came up with that scale. I, I, my memory tells me the 1960s. And so uh, the enhanced scale came probably the early 2000s. Okay. Don't quote me on either one of those. Those are kind of Thanks. general yes, times. But now we, we say EF. And it's just a, it didn't really change things overall too much on the damage part of it. But we found out wind speeds are, were a little different than what he had estimated originally. Mm. So, oh, okay. So it's really <clears throat> E and EF are pretty much the same thing when it comes down to it. It's mm -hmm. still... F5 or EF5 is still a really bad. Yeah, it's really bad. Right. It's a really bad event. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, you don't ever want to be in one of those. Uh, typically, those big tornadoes that are, that are a mile wide like that mm -hmm. are multiple tornadoes in the middle of it. Oh. <clears throat> so if you do a tornado simulator, 
uh, which Purdue had when I was here. Yeah, actually. Dr. Snow had that. Yes, yeah. Dr. Snow. Do, isn't that a great name for it, it is. for yeah, yeah, yeah. for uh, yeah. someone who studies? I the honestly, I had a Dr. Snow and a Dr. Sun yep. in meteorology here at Purdue. Anyway, wow. <laughs> no Dr. Storm or anything, but so yeah, Dr. Uh, Snow had this, and he he would get the little tornado going. So you're sending up. Uh, just smoke through the middle of this thing. Mm -hmm. He has the air come in at an angle and so it creates this mixing and swirling and it becomes this skinny little tornado. And as he increases the fan speed at the top, which mm -hmm. is pulling the air up, mm -hmm. um, instead of just that tornado getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it splits into two and they're going around each other and then three and then four and then five. That is a really chaotic event at that point. You've got five regular tornadoes all going around each other, and they are just causing awful damage. I mean, they are flattening stuff. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's so much worse than just a regular tornado. Um, the most impressive picture ever taken uh, of a multiple vortex tornado mm -hmm. is from Elkhart, Indiana. Now, oh. there's a lot of cool video out there that's showing showing it. This is uh, from the Palm Sunday outbreak of 1965 okay. mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the tornado went south of Elkhart, Indiana. His picture shows US 33, two lane highway then, it's now a big four lane highway, but and two large tornadoes side by side oh, wow. splitting with the road going down the middle. Mm -hmm. oh. Now what was happening in this is people who were watching this their eyewitnesses said it was coming together, then it was coming apart, and then coming together. Well, they were doing this. And oh, so when they're exactly. one in front of the other, okay. you only see one, see. and then you see two, and then one. And that's one of those extreme examples of two large tornadoes um, side by side. And that, that ended up being a, an F4 at the time. Okay. Now, when you have... <coughs> I want to say a tornado, but multiple vortices going on. Do we still count that as one event since they're right there together? Y yes. Okay. If, if they're going around each other, they're the same circulation. Okay. okay. But you're getting multiple little or big yeah. vortices yeah. in the yeah. middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> little relatively. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Wow. wow. Okay. Well, that, that makes more sense for the EF then. Mm -hmm. The hands scale. Because I'm like, it's, I still hear in all my good B movies, they just they, they haven't picked up the enhanced part yet. Yeah. Oh, they my, still say e none, none of my good F. B movies. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it took me a little while because on TV you kind of have to be correct on that, and so you, yes. you catch yourself saying, "Oh, it was an F." Th I mean, an EF3. Yeah. You know, yeah. So once it changed. But. Now, it, doing the the TV, that has to be tough, um, especially living in that area. Did you have a lot of? Uh, Free critique? <laughs> you know, I, I hear from meteorologists all the time about how the public is just mean to them sometimes. Uh -huh. yeah. Certain ones of the public, yeah, right. certain people typically. I didn't find that very much. Oh, I, awesome. Well, I don't know if it's just the way I presented it, because I wasn't any more correct than anybody else. Well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, when you explain it, instead of being confident about it, you yeah. explain, you know, it could end up a little bit less than this. Now, you can't be too wishy-washy. You have well, to kind of play kind it of in the middle there yeah. somewhere. But if you explain to people what's going on and what could happen other than what the forecast is, I don't think they mind that much. Okay. But if you're, like, going out there, it's going to be sunny tomorrow, and it pours on somebody's picnic, uh, yeah. They're not going to be too happy. Yeah. I'm not happy with my own forecast when that happens. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, is um, is it true? So these might be missed in my head. That you're you're not allowed to ever say it's going to be fifty percent. I've not heard that one, but that's so funny. <laughs> um, like a fifty percent chance? Are you not allowed to say that? The weather service does. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll admit I did not ever say 50% on television. Okay. And it's purely, it's, it, so your myth is partially correct because th you just get jokes. You're just creating a joke by yeah. saying 50% chance of rain tomorrow. Uh, because people, oh, it's just a flipping the coin, exactly. you know, <laughs> that's what it is. 
Well, so <laughs> let's say in the situation where it's pop-up thunderstorms uh -huh. mm -hmm. and it's like throwing popcorn in a pan, which one's going to pop first and that, that's the thunderstorm. And so let's say 50% of your viewing area, the counties that you cover, got rain that day and 50% did not. That's a perfect forecast, even though it's a laughable forecast. Yeah. So I would either do 40 or 60. Okay. The Weather Service does do 50, and technically they're correct. I just I wouldn't didn't want to open myself up to jokes. But you're pulling <laughs> the 40 or 60 based off experience in looking at the data from the model. Uh, right? Correct. So I'm I'm, in other words, I I think is it more likely or less likely than 50-50 yeah. in those situations mm -hmm. to get rain or no rain? Because your <clears throat> educated guess on that is going to be a whole lot better than mine. Because I mean you did this for just a living. because you of looked that, right? at this. Experience, your yeah. experience yeah. has yeah. taught you. But so when you, it's a valuable thing. When you talk about percentages out on day seven, let's say, mm -hmm. a week from today. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You, One should, you shouldn't be anywhere near zero or 100 at that oh, point. Fair enough. Okay. Right. You should be somewhere between 20, 30, 40, because that's climatologically, that's the chance of rain each day around uh -huh. here in the middle of this country is like 30 some percent. So. Uh -huh. Uh, well, well, that's like too, yeah. well, I know yeah. what Mike Baldwin, when we interviewed him, what he say a, a 10 day forecast is nothing but entertainment or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, it's, he's like, you can't really reliably do it that far in advance. Correct. Yeah. And I, I didn't like doing a 10 day forecast, yeah. I, but the news director wanted the 10 day forecast. <laughs> and if I wanted to keep my job, yeah. I did the 10 day forecast. <laughs> yeah. So, what yeah. I would explain to people, I typically wouldn't talk too much about the chances for rain or snow out that far. Uh -huh. But we can sometimes have an idea the mm -hmm. temperatures are trending up or trending down and so I had a 10-day forecast that actually had higher bars for the warmer days mm -hmm. so it at least gives people kind of an idea at the end of that yeah. what might be coming but you, you he's correct you keep it with yeah. it, it's, <laughs> it you keep it uh, kind of wishy-washy on the end of the forecast because every single day you go out the farther you go out the less chance you have of mm -hmm. being right right and it, but, but it, but that makes sense. I mean, based on what you're talking about, there's so many variables. Right. It, it, it yeah, it's chaotic because mm -hmm. you can't control that many variables and you can't plan for that many variables. Yes. And uh, right. the thing I know that you you went with the extreme, going with like the butterfly in China because of here. But there there are so many variables. I mean, how many leaves are green? You know. So what's the yeah. albedo? So you know, is are we absorbing more energy or reflecting more? than we were yesterday because we have more leaves that are larger. Mm -hmm. Something as simple as that mm -hmm. could really impact my 10 day forecast that you can't, right. the models can't, they can't, they have to go with approximately averages and. Right. Yeah. So yeah, there's so many variables that we would never think there, about. Right, there are a lot. And um, back to the tornado chasing real quick. Yes. Yeah. We had never had anybody die from tornado chasing that were actually official chasers but mm -hmm. that happened a few years ago south of Oklahoma City with very experienced people three oh, three really? guys very experienced tons of experience at doing it and they got caught um, typically we say you don't chase in a metropolitan area okay it's too many too many roads too many traffic jams too many You've got to have escape routes when you're, yes. yeah. when you're chasing. You've got to have re really good maps <laughs> you yes. know, and yeah. know where, the, where those escape routes are. Um, on top of that, they were following a tornado um, that got affected by another strong storm beside it. So here's the chaos part. So this storm did not take a straight path, and many tornadoes don't. Mm -hmm. uh, this one suddenly veered and caught them off guard and hit them. Oh. Um, and all three of them died. Oh wow! Because oh, of it. Yeah, it's a terrible. It's a terrible story, and the risk uh -huh. when you're tornado chasing is real. Mm -hmm. But you try to keep that risk to a minimum, and yeah. uh, and they got caught uh, just because of that chaos. Because another big storm affected the right. path of this tornado. Now, when you're when as a weather person on on TV, how much social media? do you look at if you're talking about storms coming in? And I asked this because I know there, there was a group at Purdue mm -hmm. that a few years ago we were doing events and they were pre presenting to a large group of students and they actually had created algorithms that pulled 
like Twitter and Instagram posts and tracked well they could track crime and say and actually they do it professionally in police departments like pay for it now I think the program they'll actually oh my goodness this I will be heard based of this. off Twitter and stuff all right we're oh, getting wow. multiple tweets in this area so we're expecting there is a large party in this area or there's different crime things happening wow. over here but they'll, they did for the weather and so they would pull in and look for tweets and stuff to see which direction different the actually tornadoes that went through Kokomo oh, they had yeah. all that data up that they did through just through social media that's amazing. And it, yeah, I know. That's what I thought. Yeah. I was so. Bored. So what, how much do you guys? In the, well, in the case of a TV station, it's going to depend on how many people are working that day. Uh -huh. It comes down okay. to that. Okay. If it's just me, and yeah. and there's one person in the newsroom because it's a weekend. Yeah. Uh huh. And the two reporters are out somewhere doing something else. Then we're not going to see any of that. If, if there's two meteorologists and there's two or three people that we tell, hey, we'll keep an eye on social media, right. then you can start to use some of that. But having a program like that or an app like that would be unbelievably yeah, be yeah. Very powerful. good. Yeah. Because when you're when I'm live on TV, I can't ask questions. I'm mm -hmm. yeah. I'm talking to the camera. I'm looking yeah. at the radar. I'm drawing on the radar. I'm I can only focus on one thing at a time, um, <laughs> for the most part. And so, <clears throat> trying to look at social media just wouldn't happen while yeah. I'm while I'm doing it. But if somebody hands me a note, I'll read it live on TV. Like, hey, we have this tornado just crossed County Road 500 or something, okay. you know? Oh, uh, yeah. okay. So, but that's well. There's another variable, right? right. Well, everything. There's so many variables. And everything. How many it, people are actually working that? It day? is. It's, so, it's yes. a very. Yeah, that is a variable at, at every TV station. <laughs> that's fair enough, and I think about that. Yeah, you just always assume that there's whole crews there all the time. And yeah. No, it's and, kind of one of those things. In, in all honesty, in the TV business, uh, the the crews have shrunk over the years uh -huh. because we used to have three channels out of Indianapolis. Let's yeah. say we had a, a choice of three channels. Now, how many channels do you have on your oh, cable my. or whatever? Yeah. Hundreds. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, and so there's not as much money going into these TV stations. And so in all honesty, they have less staff than they used to. Um, the meteorologists haven't been cut down because you still need, People still want you still need two during the week, mornings and evenings, and mm -hmm. you still need at least one person on weekends. But most most stations have at least four well, it, meteorologists. I'm not sure if I can ask you this question. We can cut it out if, if you're like, mm, no. <laughs> don't go there, Stephen. Um, that happens. Actually, it does. Yeah. I don't know him well enough. I know. But I, 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 I know. know. <laughs> it, does, it does happen. It does. Yeah. Um, what's the future of TV stations for weather? No, I'll, I'll answer it. I don't know. I don't. S We're going to need to get our local news from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I'm not sure how that's going to come to us in the future. I'm not sure what the future of uh, television news is. Because, I mean, getting right down to it, a lot of the people watching this in yeah. schools, they're not watching local news. Oh, a lot of 20-somethings, 30-somethings are not watching local news. It's more people my wife's and my age, yeah. I'm, in the, I'm in my 60s, that's who's watching local news. And so I don't know what happens. I, I yeah. yeah. And and the weather's a whole other issue. If yeah. the apps become so good that nobody needs to pay attention to the meteorologists mm -hmm. on TV, that's a tough situation. I still think you need them for tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings. Exactly. Because people can't read their radars like a professional can, and right. so yeah, uh, we're still going to need need people on TV but yeah I, I'm uh, I don't know with technology I don't know where we're headed yeah. on that it's because I know myself it's yeah if, if I know a, a storm is predicted a real good storms coming in I'm gonna go online and hit the local TV station right and, mm -hmm. and see what that person said right it, but other than that I don't ever sit down and watch a forecast and yet I look at it every day on my phone. Right. Yeah. You know, before I go to bed, I look at it. Oh, what's tomorrow look like? You know, in the morning, oftentimes I'll look at it. So I look at it every day on the phone. Yeah. But I'm not sitting out watching TV like, like I used to. Like, it, like when that was the only it. way you could get it. Yes. yes. Now you can get it on your phone. Um, I tell the story back in the 90s my, when, our, when our kids were little, we camped with other families a lot and went tent uh -huh. camping and pop-up 
tent camping and um, they would always turn to me when the storm when when it started turning black outside and like we're out in the woods here. <laughs> um, yeah, I have nothing more than my eyes like you yeah. do. And, uh, and I would joke around and say, let me get my pocket Doppler out. Yeah. And just joke. But they Now we have it. <laughs> now we have it. Yeah. Everybody has it. I didn't know this was going to happen like this. Well, if I did, I'd be a, a multi-trillionaire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but, but no, I, I just, I just kind of joked around like, you know, let me let me uh -huh. get yeah. this Doppler radar that right up. nobody else has. So now everybody can look at the Doppler radar. Yeah. Yeah, or their own. I, I know it, it are, you've talked about having different apps at home. I know we have at my house. We have different apps, and we'll compare. And, yes. And, well, mine says there's definitely you know a high percent chance of rain. I'm like, well, I'm showing. <laughs> right. Well, I'm showing eight to twelve inches of snow tomorrow. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I don't right. think so. You know, so it's. Yeah. Even the radar apps, if you look at them side by side, mm -hmm. they look totally different. Yes, they do. Because my son, he took a meteorology class here at Purdue. Yeah. Not he just graduated in December, and he'd taken a class. Okay. Uh, within the last two years, and he was for that class. I think required to have. I think they they gave him like four or five apps to download. Oh wow. Different ones to download for the class. For the radar or the forecast? Uh, I think. It, I don't know how many. I okay. don't remember the mix-up, mm -hmm. but I know a couple of them had radar, and so we're always kind of comparing radars. Right. That because he didn't keep all of them after the class, he went ahead and got rid of some just for space on his phone. Right. And uh, it's, of course, I'm using one that the National Weather yeah. Service during our storm, storm training. training yeah. That's the one I'm using. Yeah. And uh, it is like. So natural weather service treat, teach me how to do storm tracing. Uh, okay, I'll get that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, uh, during storms, I use the National Weather Service radar mm -hmm. uh, because it's it's one radar. Most of the radar apps are taking all the radars across the country and putting them together like a puzzle. Yeah. Oh. And so you tend to lose details sure. on that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so a lot of times, my wife will say something about her app and then I'll check the one where it's just showing the Indian, Indianapolis radar right. yeah. and uh, it'll be showing something a little bit different, very close. But the second thing is this, when Doppler radar came out, they are so much more powerful that they're picking up small droplets that are several hundred feet up in the air here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the radar beam goes straight out, but because of the curvature of the earth, yes. <laughs> it's yeah. actually, the beam is actually pretty far above us here in Lafayette by the time he, or West Lafayette, by the time he gets from Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. And so it's actually picking up what may be evaporating before it hits the ground. Yeah. So one of the things I noticed when Doppler radar came out is it was picking up all this stuff is you'd see the green come over and nothing would fall. There'd be yeah. no rain falling. And so I changed my whole color table at the TV station to to back off on all of that. Oh, okay. And so I blocked out the lower three levels and then started with the light green and then went to yellows mm -hmm. and reds. Now, my my uh, radar on TV didn't look like doom and gloom, but that's because it wasn't doom and gloom. Yeah. And so I tried to make it more realistic than what, um, what the actual radar information comes. So when I'm watching the radar on my app now, I have to be careful myself because I'll say, oh, it's gonna rain here in five minutes and well, the green comes over and it didn't rain a bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I have to I have to remember in my head. Oh, that's not the color table I was using. That's mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah. You have to recalibrate yeah. yourself. So yeah. every app is different in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think kind of where I think we're in a unique spot too because we're kind of, to my understanding, in an area where we're in between two mm -hmm. of the National Weather Services. So we do get. That right. radar, but yeah, Robin it, has the Xterra. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, and yeah. so I'm waiting for that to get in there. That's I know. So I can that's see where I'm it is right here on campus <laughs> before I decide if I want to walk out at lunch. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now the, the the one thing about it is when you're real close to a radar, you're getting ground clutter everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And so a lot of times the radar blocks out. There's a donut hole in the middle where it kind of blocks oh, okay. out the information. So you don't necessarily want the radar across the street from you because yeah. <laughs> got it. Yeah. It, it's seen too much. It's yeah, seen it's trees and buildings and yeah. everything else. Yeah, I know they so. have several black, uh, dark spots that they're blocked out. Like yeah. Math building and the water tower and 
all that on campus because it's right there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, this conversation brought up a couple more things. Around here, it's the windmills. Oh, oh okay. You'll, you'll see, oh, whoa, there's a big thunderstorm near Brookston. And it's like, wait a second, it's not moving. It's always there. It's just sitting there. <laughs> Perpetual. So when the when the when the windmills are facing when the wind direction is just right and the windmills are facing us doing this yeah. rather than sideways, uh -huh. it's actually sending back oh oh, reflections, wow. and so you get this boom, big old blob. <laughs> Can that be accounted for or, or, or factored out, or is it just? I, um, I don't know. That's a good question. It hasn't been on my app. I, I okay. see it. Yeah. All the time. Well, I mean, it's only certain days where the where they're facing the right direction. Uh -huh. Yeah. Another story is out of Texas when they first put in, I believe it was San Angelo, Texas, Southern Texas. Mm -hmm. They first put in a radar um, there. They issued tornado warnings a couple of nights in a row because of this big blob west west that uh -huh. suddenly popped up around sunset. Okay. And uh, or severe thunderstorm warnings. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. not yes. tornado warnings. And um, they thought, well, what is going on over there? And so they, they actually went out to look. Mm -hmm. Millions of bats were coming out of caves at sunset, and the radar was picking them up, oh and all goodness. of a sudden this boom. And so now they know that happens yeah. just about every night. <laughs> and they, wow. And they discount it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, random stuff like oh that. Oh my goodness, uh -huh. well. <laughs> That's awesome though. <laughs> yeah. It is, I know, I know, I love that story. It's like, whoa. Yeah. It's like the bats would look like a, a storm. I know, <clears throat> and there'd be that many of them too that it right. would register. Right, right. Oh, there's that, that kind of gives me a little bit of a chill. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like bats. Well, I love them, but if there's that many, I think I'd be nervous. Yeah, no, nervous. too many yeah. B-movies. <laughs> We have a bat house at home, but I ever see that many sports flock, flock in for, yeah. towards my house. Yeah, I think I'm just that going inside. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for coming to oh, chat with us. So this was awesome. I, yes. loved, I loved it. <laughs>